For me, this is one of our most exciting projects because uh, diving technically, it is super challenging. Yeah, well, it is also a collaboration between uh, between uh, organizations, SDSS, LTCs, and ghost diving. Uh, that makes it super special because SDSS is not uh, a marine conservation um, organization, but uh, focusing on um, history, so archaeology, um, finding the, uh, the the history behind uh, a shipwreck. Um, that's something that we do not often include in our projects, so uh, that is for us um, well super interesting because most of us are originally wreck divers. This operation is uh, special in a way because uh, everything is more extreme than usual. So what I mean with that is that um, offshore we are like 100 miles on an average, which is uh, pretty far away. Uh, with the boat, this takes us a, almost a day to come there. So we go overnight to the location. Uh, that also means that we are cut off from um, every single telephone connection. We only are depending on the local fisherman who is in contact with his uh, radios to the, to the shore. Um, and another aspect is the diving part. The diving part is pretty deep. That means that on an average we are working between 40 and 70 meters. Um, the wrecks down there are super interesting because no one ever died there. Most of them, uh, many of them are still not identified and we are trying to do that now um, with our project, which is not the main goal, of course, but um, one organization is helping the other. That means that if we are uh, removing the nets from, for example, a cargo hole, um, um, SDSS operations can take place in that cargo hole and try to identify the wreck. And um, this makes this whole project super interesting collaboration. Yeah. In terms of diving, um, we are very selective with the people we can take to this operation. Uh, we are looking for CCR divers only. So there's no way we can do any open circuit diving on that location. Uh, that's not because it's not possible, but that's only because it's logistically not possible or uh, not acceptable. Because if you go out for three days uh, and you do two deep dives on a day uh, on such a small vessel, it is just impossible to take all open circuit gases on board of the vessel. Uh, that's why we logistically choose to uh, only take CCR divers. Um, on top of that, we also um, need really really to handpick um, people who are experienced in far operations at sea. This is also a very interesting and very important skill because uh, there are many CCR divers around uh, and everybody can do his skills etc cetera, etc cetera. but operating for three days 100 miles offshore is just something different. There's no way you can be seasick you have to be super comfortable with the circumstances on board of the vessel and down there. And you know, you have to give up your comfort for three days. And that is um, something we highlight always in our presentations. And when we show people the pictures, the whole operation doesn't look that romantic anymore as uh, the, the idea they had uh, before that. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's in, all, in all forms, it's really a really interesting project. What does legacy in this context mean to you? Legacy means, of course, the historical uh, basis of this project, so that we are trying to identify uh, a couple of wrecks, but also pre uh, preserving them. That is, this is also an aspect that has to be highlighted. So uh, the ships, you have to see, they, they sank in war times. Uh, they are now on the seabed and uh, during the decades they are heavily fished in that area. They're all covered with fishing nets and um, they are not recognizable as such. So I see that um, what I feel is that the shipwreck has to be preserved to keep that legacy for our uh, for the next generations that we can just show them 
explain them what happened. And um, yeah, it's just a legacy. 